All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples, some, uh, some additional examples, and how to find these limits uh, a little bit more analytically, and that way we don't have to go back to the calculator or to a graph to find out uh, what exactly we're doing. And so our instructions here to find f of g of x uh, as x tends to 1, and we know that that is uh, as long as the limit of, and I'll kind of do this as an aside, as long as the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x exists, and in this case it does, it's in fact 1 cubed, which is just 1. And so this is really f of 1 from our previous example, and so this ends up being 4. And here's, an, here's a trig example. And if we take a look at this, this becomes, uh, we can just do direct substitution, and this becomes the cosine of 2 pi over 3, which is going to be a, a cosine of 120, which will be a negative 1 half. For a different technique, slightly different, uh, what we can do is if you if you notice this, we use direct substitution down here, and we say, well, this is negative 1 squared minus 1 over, uh, I'm sorry, uh, negative 1 plus 1, which is really 1 minus 1 over negative 1 plus 1, which is 0 over 0, and so we have a problem. This is where techniques such as factoring out and dividing, uh, canceling both top and bottom, that sort of thing. Don't forget rationalizing the denominator or numerator perhaps might come in handy. And so if we look, the top is in fact the difference of two squares and can be factored so that we have the limit as x tends to negative 1 of x plus 1, x minus 1 on top over x plus 1 on the bottom. The x plus 1s on top and bottom cancel. And so this is the same as the limit as x approaches negative 1 of uh, x minus 1 which is negative 2. So that's another way of, of looking at it there. And here's an interesting problem. Not to psych you out with the one underneath it, but here's a very interesting problem in which uh, if we recognize this, you know, we have problems of 0 over 0 again. If you direct substitute, 4 plus 5 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. We have a problem. Now instead of uh, instead of dividing out, which we really can't do, let's go ahead and let's rationalize the numerator by multiplying by the conjugate. In case you don't recall, the conjugate is you just take the sign and change it, and that's the conjugate. Okay, the beautiful thing about this is when we're done, we get the difference of two squares out which the square of the root x plus 5 is just x plus 5. The square of 3 is 9, and we take the difference between the two, and then we have x, x minus 4 times the quantity root x plus 5 plus 3. Okay, if we want to continue this down here underneath, uh, we notice at the top, factors down, or um, uh, boils down to x minus 4, so we have x minus, minus 4 on the bottom, and then root x plus 5 plus 3. The x plus, or the x minus 4s cancel out, and so I get 1 over the square root of x plus 5 plus 3. And now I can go ahead and take the limit as that approaches 4, and I get 1 over 6. Okay, and so in, in a way, we are operating within the limit. We're just changing about how the, how the inside looks. And you recall that if the limit exists, of course, uh, for, for this particular uh, problem here, then we can multiply it by something inside or a constant, and it doesn't really change it. It just changes it by whatever the constant is. Notice our constant is 1, and therefore it doesn't change the answer, so we don't have to do anything at the end. Okay, now for this monster here, 
it looks awful. It does not have to be awful. Uh, I liken this very much to cleaning out cupboards in that most people, when they clean cupboards, and by clean, I mean wipe it down and everything, they don't take dishes, you know, one dish out, wipe under it, put it back, or a stack of dishes. They typically will rework the entire cupboard. And so that's what I tend to do anyway. And so what I'm going to do is expand the top out. And so this portion here is x squared plus 2x, uh, change of x, or delta x, uh, plus the quantity delta x squared. And then I have this, which is negative 2x minus 2 delta x. And then in purple, I have the rest of this, plus 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. And that's all over delta x. Well, if we look here, we can start kind of canceling stuff out. Uh, we have a negative x squared there with a positive x squared. We've got a positive 2x. We've got a negative 2x. We've got a positive one. We've got a negative one. And so when we get all done, said and done, we have the limit as the change of x tends to 0 of 2x delta x plus delta x squared minus 2 delta x all over delta x. Okay, well now if we go through, we see that every term on the top has a common uh, factor of delta x. So we can cancel out delta x on top and bottom. One of those goes away, this one goes away. And so finally, what we have left is 2x minus 2 plus delta x. And as that tends to 0, that goes to 0. And our final answer is just 2x minus 2. So you've learned a lot over algebra, a lot of techniques over algebra. But you want to be very careful. You don't want to just forget about those techniques. They can crop up at any time. And so you want to make sure that if you, if you don't see things like this, and they're not readily seen until you encounter them, such as rationalization, uh, that you refresh yourself and, and make sure that you can at least do the problem, if not see it.